Hey YouTube, a little more than a year ago, I created a video talking about this self-moving chicken tractor that I built. And I mentioned in that video that I had taken a bunch of footage of the build of it. And I'm just now getting around to putting a few videos together talking about the build. This first video, I'm just gonna talk about the motors and the wiring and the controls for it. Bear with me on these videos. I lost a few of the clips, so I'm gonna have to do a few freeze frames and do voiceovers and just explain to you how I did a few things. Other than that, I hope you enjoy. So here is what I am going to use to make this chicken coop easy to move. I'm going to use motors off of an electric wheelchair. I got this wheelchair for free off of Craigslist. Um, it doesn't it doesn't work. Um, the joystick, the something about the wiring or the electronics or something inside the joystick is broken. And uh, so the person was giving it away for free. It also has no batteries and it has no charger cord, but I don't really care about those. I can um, charge it my own way and I have batteries. So I'm going to uh, disassemble this and get it up on the bench and then we will see uh, what we have to do to make this thing work remotely. On this wheelchair, they have these connector types for each motor, four wires. You can see that there's a, a thick red and a thick black, which are the positive and the negative. And then a yellow and a white, which are the, uh, the wires that run to the brakes and when you provide voltage to it, it unlocks the brakes. It's a safety mechanism. In our case, we won't need that, so we'll ignore it. So on this one, I've cut off the, the connector at the end, and now I'm gonna strip these down and just test to make sure the wires work. I mean, uh, sorry, the motors work. Let's see if it works. Yes. That's 12 volts. Let's go up a little bit more. I think this thing only goes to, oh, it does go to 24. All right, it's 24 volts. I want to just explain this next clip a little bit. There are two electrical components in it that I didn't name. The first is the little board that controls each motor. That's called a Sabertooth 2x25 board. The other part is the actual remote control. That's just a standard remote control for an RC airplane. You can order it off of any hobby uh, online web store playing around with it, but I got it to work. So here's the way it's set up. Over here on my receiver, I have two wires here at the top, the black and the yellow, which run over to the saber tooth to get their five volts, that's positive negative. And then I have two other wires, the red and the blue, which go into the two different receiving signals on the saber tooth. Uh, in my case, my transmitter, uh, this joystick, which is what I wanna use, is channels three and channels four. So it's kind of hard to tell here, but these two empty ones at the bottom would be one and two, so then three and four have the wires. Uh, then I've got my two wires coming from one motor, two wires coming from the other motor, and then the green and red here in the middle are the power coming from the power supply. In my case, I just have it hooked up to my little external power supply. My dip switch settings look like that. If you want to look up online what that looks like, you can figure it out pretty quick, but just really quickly, the one at the top is mixed mode, which means that one joystick can control both motors. And then this one, uh, not the bottom one, but the next one up, is, um, it. I don't remember what they call it, but it makes it so that if you just push the joystick a little bit, the motors just move a little bit, and then as you go push the joystick further, it goes faster. Uh, so it gives you a little more control. So let me show you that it works. I've got my uh, power supply on. I'm gonna turn on my controller. There we go, oops. All right, so controller's on. Forward, backward, full speed, left. You can see if I go left, both wheels spin in opposite directions. And if I go right, they go the opposite direction. All right, that's a huge hurdle. The front caster wheel and the motor all came off. <coughs> excuse me, all came off as one piece. 
So I'll probably take this apart in the next video, get that um, detached so that I can work with them individually. But now I can get this out of the way, get it all out of the way so I can start building the frame. All right, that's it for video one. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Also, I'd appreciate if you want to subscribe or share the video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I actually connected the motors together. It got a little bit complex because the other two motors that I um, got off the other wheelchair didn't match, so I had to make them connect together. And then I actually start building the frame for the, uh, the actual wooden part of the coupe as well. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>